It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview a Boston Pride NWHL player, Carly Turner. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to play professional hockey? Yeah, um, I think for me, it was a little bit of a weirder um, process just because when I finished college hockey, um, I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted to play still. Um, I was applying to medical school um, and I'm going to medical school this July. So I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted to just kind of move on with my life or, um, or play another year. And so I actually started like reaching out or some of the coaches started reaching out to me and talking about the teams and just the opportunity to play and everything uh, during the draft part of the season. And when I started talking to them, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, it'd be, it'd be cool to play another year, um, especially play professional women's hockey and be able to have that and be able to kind of grow the sport more and stuff. Um, so I kind of figured out I wanted to play just by talking to those coaches. And then I honestly was like, I just want to play for Boston because that's kind of where I've uh, been from in New Hampshire the past couple of years. And I have a lot of teammates, like prior teammates in Boston and um, the coach and the the whole staff seemed like just like a great program so I was kind of hoping and praying that I'd be able to play for Boston honestly. Of course can you talk about uh, that time and do y'all get to pick where y'all want to play at or is it like the in NHL where you get just draft? Yeah um, I guess it's kind of like a mix um, it's definitely not like the NHL where you just get drafted and you have to go where you go Um first kind of the coaches will reach out to you to see if you're even interested in playing um, in the NWHL because not everyone is interested and they obviously don't want to draft someone that's not going to play. Um, So they kind of reach out to you and see what you're interested in. But at the same time, they reach out and see like where you're interested in going. Cause if, if I don't know, Connecticut reaches out to you and they say they're really interested and they want to draft you. But I say like, I don't want to be in Connecticut whatsoever. Um, they're not going to draft me because they kind of want what's best for us. And at the same time, like it's not as big as the NHL right now. So um, we do get a little bit of say-so where we want to go, um, which was nice. I mean, at the end of the day, you don't fully get a say-so um, if you're drafted somewhere, that's where you're going. But um, I was lucky enough to talk to coach Paul at Boston and tell him that I was just super interested. Um, so they said that they would try to take me on if possible. Can you talk about your college time at UNH? Yeah, um, it was fun. We I uh, committed there to UNH about sophomore year of high school. Uh, and I liked UNH just because it was a very famous, like historic hockey school for sure. Um, for the men and the women, they weren't doing as great. So it was, uh, it was a cool idea to try to come to UNH and try to build the program back up to where it was it used to be and stuff. Um, additionally, I liked it just because of the campus and it wasn't like straight dead in the city of Boston and everything. Um, it was a beautiful campus and you could kind of still breathe fresh air at the same time. Um, but playing college hockey at UNH was, yeah, it was so fun. Um, the great staff um honestly it's peace like year after year is pretty cool to see um and to try to get back up to that area of our season and everything was it was fun four years what was it like getting drafted to the boston pride yeah um it well i actually wasn't drafted i was um i was taken on as like a free agent they said they were going to draft me and then it kind of like fell through i don't know and then they took me as a free agent. Um, so technically like the same thing, but I just didn't go through like the draft portion of the year. Um, but when I, when they told me that they were signing me as a free agent and sent me over those paperwork and 
so they were going to release it and everything it was it was so exciting because like I said I was um I wasn't exact, exactly sure if I wanted to play but then when I figured it out and I wanted to play I was like Boston would be my number one place to go and when I was able to like sign with them I was just so ecstatic to be like a part of that program what was it like the first time you put on that gold that yellow gold uniform yeah um that was cool I mean the the jerseys were brand new for everyone that year um they were pretty cool the way they were made and everything but yeah overall just I had been putting on a UNH jersey for the past four years and when I took off that jersey my senior year after our last game in the playoffs I was like well this is it um and then to be able to put on another jersey like a brand new jersey colors I've never worn before um for a for a team that is just um such a great team like great girls great staff and everything it was um it was pretty awesome to put the jersey on and play a game with the with that group of girls what is a typical game day like before COVID? um unfortunately i don't exactly know <laughs> because i came on this year only um and we were yeah i mean they talked about um what games would be like but once we figured out that we're be doing very very odd season for sure it was insanely um for the finals and where we won the championship uh and that's where they usually play their home games it's a pretty cool rink too it's i think it's where the boston bruins practice um but i could just imagine like it filled with fans and everything because it's like it's somewhat small um and you could pack a lot of people in there and there's like boston bruins and boston pride stuff all over the arena it's um it's a cool little arena and I could imagine what it would be like on game day, but unfortunately I didn't get to see it because we only had cardboard cutouts. <laughs> what is it like playing in basically the hockey city of Boston? Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, I, like I said, I went to university of New Hampshire, so I was about like an hour or so away from Boston. And part of me was always like, Oh, I kind of wish I went to a Boston school um, other than the craziness of the city. But Boston's so cool. Like I lived there for one year or about less than one year. And it was, it's an amazing city. Like just having the Red Sox there, the Pats, the Celtics, um, the Bruins, like it's just such a great sports city. Um, and to be a part of that was pretty cool. Like to see, to see um, our championship banner going into Boston Logan airport and stuff like along with the Celtics and the Bruins and the Sox and everything. It's, it's cool. Cause it's definitely a really good city for sports. Can you talk about of course winning the Isabel cup in Lake Placid and what that was like? Yeah. Like the course you said? Yes. Um, so it was, yeah, we had a bumpy ride for sure. Um, we went to Lake Placid to play the bubble season about two weeks. It was supposed to be. And we went out and, the historic Boston Pride team that lost one game last year um, actually lost to every single team <laughs> in the bubble season. So it was kind of like um, a big shock to everyone, to the old players, to the rookie players, to the staff, and to basically everyone on social media. Everyone was like, what? Boston is no good anymore. Um, it was kind of a big shock. We kind of had to find our feet and just our groove as a team overall. Um, but once we did that, we kind of felt like we were just unstoppable. Um, unfortunately, we made it to the semis and then the we had to leave Lake Placid because there were some outbreaks of uh, COVID. Um, so we left Lake Placid and didn't get to play the semis or the finals and we thought we were going to be done. Um, but luckily, the the NWHL staff and, and the Boston staff and everything, they put something great together and we, where we got to play our uh, semis and our finals up in Boston, like I said, at the Warrior Arena. Um, and again, I mean, we came in uh, to play Toronto, the Toronto Six for our semi game and we lost to them. Um, but we, although we'd lost to the, all these teams, we, I don't know, we had like a newfound kind of confidence. Um, we were just really ready, really excited to get an opportunity to play again. And we beat Toronto and then we came to play Minnesota. And again, we lost to Minnesota, but we came in confident and played our game and we won. And it was, uh, it was like I said, it was a bumpy ride, but it was all worth it. And we uh, finally came out champions. So it was cool. What was it like for you lifting up the Isabel Cup 
knowing that y'all were champs. Yeah, that was, um, it was so cool. Um, it's been like, I played at uh, UNH for a couple of years and obviously had a great couple of years there, but unfortunately we didn't get to win anything like that. Um, I won a pretty big championship in high school, which was amazing, but this was definitely the kind of the, the top of everything, the, the icing on the cake. It was um, to be able to win that Isabel cup uh, for women's professional hockey with that group of girls, the stuff we went through that season with our ups and downs and people getting COVID and um, everything. It was, it was, I don't even know how to explain it. I look back at the pictures and I was like, oh, I was just so happy to like be able to lift that cup and, and be able to know that like, that was the last time I'd be putting on that Jersey. And the last time I'd be putting on like uh, a Jersey for kind of any professional team. Um, and to be able to lift that cup was like, ugh, you can't, I can't even explain it. It was amazing. Can you talk about, of course, playing with players like Taylor Winkowski and Caitlin Fracken? Yeah, um, Taylor Winkowski, I played with her at UNH, so we are good buddies. We actually became buddies at um, national camp uh, when we were young, like 13 years old. So um, I've known T for a while. She's an awesome girl, awesome player, too. Um, so it was fun to be on the team with her and kind of live close to her too, because we're just good buddies. Um, like I said, she's a great player, has, has uh, great skills, like so fast, great uh, shot, honestly, and hands and everything. She's a great player. And uh, hopefully she keeps playing and, and keeps tearing it up. Um, and then Fratty, yeah. Uh, I had just met Fratty when I came in on the team and she was kind of uh I guess what you would say, everyone, the rookies come in and they're all kind of scared of her because she's got a big presence and um, can be a little bit scary, but I honestly too, she's got the warmest heart, um, but an unbelievable player, like would never ever want to stand in front of her shot. <laughs> you might break a leg if you do, um, but overall just like a great team player and a good captain as well. Um, really got the team going together and a great defenseman. Um, but yeah, it was fun playing with all those girls on the team. Honestly, everyone was so amazing. Um, honestly, some of the best players from each of their collegiate teams. So to put that all on one team, it was, um, it was pretty amazing. What are some of your rituals that you do on game day? Um, yeah, I'm not too bad with rituals, but I, I always like to have a cup of coffee in the morning. Um, so I used to have one before games. Um, but not anymore. Um, what else do I do? I tape my stick, but everyone tapes their stick. Um, I, what do I do? I listen to music. I, I always play soccer. Um, that's probably my biggest ritual. I used to play like hacky sack um, in high school with some of my buddies at uh, Naha. And it's basically the same thing. You just play soccer with a hacky sack. It was actually so kind of hard. Um, but we play soccer. We juggle the soccer ball for, I don't know, probably a good hour or so before the game um, until we're like freaking out. We need, need to go get dressed. Um, so I would say that's my biggest ritual probably. What are some of your future plans moving forward? Yeah. Um, well, like I said, this was, um, this year was a little odd for me just because I, like I said, I didn't know I was going to play because uh, I was applying to medical school. And so once I knew that I got into medical school, um, I was, I knew that this would be my last year, uh, just because that's kind of my next path and, uh, got to get going with that long process of medical school and everything. So I start in July, um, which is super exciting. But like I said, as I knew playing that championship game and, and like Placid and everything, I knew that this was going to be my last couple of games of hockey ever. Um, and it had been a long road. So it's, uh, it was kind of bittersweet to be able to win, but also know that I was done uh, playing hockey. But now I get to move on to go to medical school. We're gonna go, I'm going to Kansas City uh, for medical school in, in July. And then just kind of take that next process from there and kind of say goodbye to hockey, unfortunately. What is the transition like from going from playing professional hockey to now preparing for medical school? Yeah. Um, It'll be, it'll be definitely a transition. Uh, like I said, I've played hockey since I was like two years old. Um, so it's kind of hard to think about life without hockey because they just kind of went hand in hand for my whole life. Um, but 
at the same time, I was definitely ready to kind of move on with the next step in my life. Um, I love hockey so much, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes with hockey, like training in the summer and um, injuries and um, lots of different things. So at the same time, I was definitely ready. I'm happy that I was, I was able to go out a champion, but excited that I can uh, move on to medical school. And I think just like simple things such as like time management will easily transition to uh, medical school and just being like a hard worker and determined and stuff will help me a lot during the hard times in the medical school and stuff like that. What advice would you give upcoming college hockey players looking to play college hockey? Yeah, um, honestly, probably just like, it's a long four years for sure. And it seems long when you're a freshman, but it goes by so quickly. Um, so just to kind of like, as best you can live in the moment and just enjoy your four years, like make great friends and just have fun. Like, I know it's so cliche, but four years goes by super quick and you don't want to think about it your senior year and go, I never even had fun. I just was always so worried about winning or being the best player on the team or whatever it is. It's just the biggest thing is just to be able to like have a good time playing the sport you love. And when you do that, you'll be a great player. Like no doubt. That's great advice. What advice would you have upcoming future hockey players that look to play professional hockey? Yeah. Um, um, I get big now because we hopefully someday like our young daughters or granddaughters can actually have like a league to play in and make a living. Um, like we personally still all have to work full-time jobs. So I moved out to Boston and found a job in a hospital and then played hockey at night with the girls uh, on the professional team. And it was, it was hard for sure at times, like it's not easy. Um, so I would just say like, I don't know, try to live in the moment. And I know it's hard, but you're doing it for a good reason because you love hockey and because uh, you want to grow the game for for the young girls below us and just kind of try to remember that when you go through the hard times because at the end of the day it is worth it and it will be worth it when uh, the league becomes something great. That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Yeah um, I'm on Instagram um, and I think I'm on Twitter. I'm not on too much anymore but mainly Instagram um, just at Carly Turner I think. Thank you again, Carly Turner, for your interview, and best of luck in your future with the medical field. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Carly, for your interview, and best of luck. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, Share and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.